gentlemen, you're watching Zay News Live and welcome to this English News Edition coming up in the next 20 minutes. Today, Saturday, will be the official opening of the temporary technical secretarial headquarters, which will host the assessment meeting of the National Initiative for Development Plus. National Education Minister Nouria Ben Gabrit will meet the sector's unions tomorrow Sunday for the final inking of the profession's ethics charter. And later on in our news program, France stepped up already heavy scrutiny in Paris today Saturday as more than 140 world leaders are set to descend on the French capital for climate talks. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. First today, Saturday, will be the official opening of the temporary technical secretarial headquarters, which will host the assessment meeting of the National Initiative for Development in Harmony and Stability under the supervision of Ben Aknoun Municipality's FLM Party. More than 40 political assortments are expected to attend the meeting, along with a number of high-profile national personalities. National Education Minister Nouria Ben Gabrit will meet this sector's unions tomorrow Sunday for the final inking of the profession's ethics charter in a time where the minister had confirmed that eight unions are ready to sign the charters while the National Council's union refused to sign the charter after dropping the term of prevention of strikes. Hints, Minabas. Views conflicted and interpretations deferred regarding the number of education unions that are to sign the Education Charter of Ethics and others that won't, headed by Knappest Union, that once again sticks to its ground and boycotts the project given it's, according to them, just a means for the ministry to cover the problems within the premises. The teacher is the source of ethical principles. He's the one teaching us ethics, and it's not in our favor to doubt his value. They asked us to think about the project, and we said we'll transfer it to the National Council. Its members say that that such charter will not be signed. Many closed meetings to discuss education's ethical charter were in order revolving around the amendments and cancelling of strike terms in a time where all indicators show that seven education unions are about to sign at the beginning of the week. We have one last session for final ratifications and God willing tomorrow at 3 p.m. we'll sign. Seven education unions will sign for sure. A thin trust thread between the Ministry of Education and its workers. It's threatened to disrupt, according to Knappest Union, if the current policy of the ministry will last for longer. Following all the demands in meetings, it seems that stability will struggle to find its way back in the sector. Conflicts have become too many to account and no solutions is seen on the horizon. People's National Army members managed to arrest five smugglers and a drug dealer in Ain Gizem and Ain Aminas in the south of the country. A statement from the Ministry of National Defense has revealed that in the frame of securing borders and preventing organized crimes, an army platoon belonging to the operation sector of Ain Gizem in the 6th military region arrested five smugglers and seized a 4-4 vehicle in addition to 1,300 liters of fuel. In the 4th military region, another army platoon belonging to the operations sector of Ain Aminas arrested a drug dealer carrying 5 kilograms of treated cannabis. ISEC Students Association has held a meeting in which high-skilled national and international women who led a successful life full of challenges were present. The objective is to inspire many Algerian women who lost hope in life and underestimate themselves. See Hamzadu for more details. Creative ideas. All young ladies full of strong personalities and fruitful ideas, like this doctor who is a psychologist at the same time. The woman to study, to work, to organize events, to travel, to, to make their own plans and to live their own dreams. So no more excuses. 
stop 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 living as a victim actually because we are not victims anymore actually other women did not miss an opportunity to study and work at the same time. This young lady, who is 27 years old, obtained several diplomas. She's a social entrepreneur, co-founder of Training School and a PhD professor. I'm a social entrepreneur, I'm a dentist, I'm an English teacher in the university, I'm a PhD student, I'm a career counselor, and uh, I'm a social worker too at the same time. Um, I'm here, uh, this is a really great opportunity for us as women uh, from Algeria showing our potential, showing what we have done and uh, how we could work with uh, men in our countries to uh, promote um, uh, education. Others have never thought of being entrepreneurs, especially at a very hard period of time where terrorism hit Algeria in the 90s. Based on my experience, I tell fellow Algerian women that we have a nice country, despite its constraints. They must seize opportunities and start up businesses. Many women have goals, initiatives, ideas and dreams to achieve. They have the right to study, to work, to innovate, to start a business. But in Algeria, women lost inspiration. However, despite social constraints, Algerian and Arab women do not miss any opportunity to shine and succeed. On the occasion of the 183rd anniversary of pledging allegiance to the founder of the modern Algerian state, Al Amir Abdel Qadir, Minister of Culture, Mr. Azdin Mihoubi, moved to the natal province of this great Algerian historic figure, Mascara, to commemorate the event organized by the Association on the Trail of Amir Abdel Qadir, which will be awarding the prize of Knight's Saddle as of next year to notable works and research in various fields. Karim Fazakri. The Minister of Culture, Azdin Mihoubi, presided over the commemorative celebrations of the 183rd anniversary of pledging allegiance to El Amir Abdel Kader, the founder of modern Algerian state. This historic event is taking place in the same place the Emir was chosen to lead the Algerian nation at the time in Ghriz town, in the western province of Mascara. <laughs> One hundred eighty-three years have passed since swearing allegiance to Al Amir Abdel Qadir. This event is a historic reference for us and in the lives of the Algerian people. He was a man of great actions and firm position. This should be taken as an example in light of what's happening in the Middle East and the unfortunate mistreatment of the Christians there and many dangerous changes. Many historians go back to this reference and the crucial role of Al Amir Abdel Qadir in protecting the Christians. The association on the trail of El Amir Abdel Qadir in Mascara, which was founded two years ago, was the one which organized this event, which saw a big popular participation in addition to the presence of high governmental officials with the Minister of Culture at the top. Since its founding, the Association of Lamir worked on preserving the memory of Lamir Abdel Qadir and spread his thoughts and ideology, the founding of the state, strengthening the society and developing ideas. Under the patronage of Ministry of Culture, this association established as of next year a prize, Night Saddle, for the best notable works and research in various scientific and cultural fields. The representative of the Polisario Front at the United Nations, Ahmed Bukhari, said yesterday, Friday, that the Sahrawi party is optimistic about the tour of the personal envoy of the UN Secretary General to Western Sahara, Christopher Ross, while remaining vigilant against the Moroccan obstinacy. The Sahrawi official said that Ross's today visit to Sahrawi refugee camps takes place in a particular context following the declarations of the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on November the 4th, which represented an implicit assessment of the UN's efforts since 2007 and negotiations that did not bring the results expected by the Security Council. Affirming that the Sahrawi party shares Ban Ki-moon's assessment, Bukhari dubbed the Moroccan autonomy, this is a vain attempt to violate international law and the right to self-determination principle.
Politicians in Burkina Faso are in the home stretch ahead of the general elections tomorrow Sunday when the country will choose a new president and parliament. The elections come just over a year after mass protests ousted long-time leader Blaise Compaoré. The resulting transition has been turbulent at times, with elections postponed last month after a failed coup. Mass protests ousted Kampari in October 2014 when he tried to change the constitution to extend his already 27-year rule. Pope Francis has landed in Uganda on the second leg of a landmark trip to Africa with huge crowds, choirs and dancers celebrating as he arrived. Francis arrived in Uganda after three days in neighboring Kenya, where vast crowds turned out to an open air mass and where the pontiff lashed out corruption and wealthy minorities who hoard resources at the expense of the poor. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has warned Russia's President Vladimir Putin not to play with fire over his country's downing of a Russian jet. Mr. Erdogan also said he wanted to meet Mr. Putin face to face at climate talks in Paris to resolve the issue. The Russian president's aide said Mr. Putin wants an apology from Turkey before he will speak to Mr. Erdogan. It's worth noting that Russia has suspended its visa free arrangement with Turkey in the latest of a range of measures. And as it's been already mentioned in the headlines, France stepped up already heavy security in Paris today, Saturday, as more than 140 world leaders are set to descend on the French capital for climate talks that will bring a massive police presence and extensive traffic restrictions just over two weeks after terror attacks shook the nation. Karimfa Zakri. The UN Climate Change Conference, known as COP21, would not be moved or postponed after the terror attacks in Paris on November 13th. However, the security headaches involved in accommodating nearly 150 heads of government and an additional 40,000 visitors and delegates are daunting. Staffing in the control room will be reinforced even though it won't be the only control room monitoring the COP. A remote center will be set up at Le Bourget to manage public order and traffic. The French government is nevertheless maintaining all events taking place in closed spaces that can easily be made secure, whereas 2,800 police and gendarmes have been dedicated to ensuring the security of the summit venue at Le Bourget on the northern outskirts of Paris. A further 8,000 officers have been deployed to secure the country's borders. Altogether, 120,000 police and gendarmes have been mobilized across France, according to the Interior Ministry. Some groups are thinking of ways to get around the ban with artistic performances in central Paris. Others are considering outright defiance. But heavy fines may deter many people from challenging the ban. And finally, the recent terrorist attacks the world has witnessed have unfortunately brought back Islamophobia to the surface, much to the disadvantage of Muslims worldwide. For the amateur young Muslim artists have taken a one-of-a-kind initiative to fight the phenomenon through art. Hins Minaraz. The latest events that have shaken the world, notably Paris attacks, have inevitably brought back the old demons of Islamophobia. Amalgams, cliches and prejudices are more and more growing in scale, creating confusion but mostly misunderstanding towards Islam and its values. Things that pushed many young actors and artists across the Muslim world to mobilize and leverage their art and their know-how to fight against this growing phenomenon. YouTube videos going viral and speeches during award ceremonies. All means are good to convey a message of peace, but above all, to understand that Islam has no relation with terrorism and cannot be associated with violence, since it has long been a religion that preaches peace. Muslim Man, a song through which young Carter Zahar passes a message of tolerance, has witnessed a great success on social media websites. The world is still 
in a state of trauma. Egyptian journalist Bassem Youssef also called for a better understanding of Islam and fight against amalgams that combine violence and terrorism at the International Emmy Awards ceremony. Young people have also organized poetry competitions and air concerts to get their messages across. Art in music, a universal language that knows neither boundaries nor time. A rather effective way to educate the public opinion lost and overwhelmed recently by the news that can no longer distinguish white from black. And we wrap up our main English news edition with a reminder of our main top stories. Today, Saturday, is the official opening of the temporary technical secretariat headquarters, which will host the assessment meeting of the National Initiative for Development. National Education Minister Nouria Ben Gabriel will meet the sector's unions tomorrow, Sunday, for the final inking of the profession's ethics charter. France stepped up already heavy security in Paris today, Saturday, as more than 140 world leaders are set to descend on the French capital for climate talks. The end of our English news edition. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.